Today at Executive Chat, we're going to meet Davide Grasso, CEO of Maserati. Davide, thanks for visiting Bocconi University. Great uh, to be here with you, Gianmario. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be here with you today. So, you're CEO of Maserati, a legendary brand uh, for Italy, but particularly for the world. And you have gone through an important turnaround. Can you share us uh, some tips of this turnaround and particularly some numbers of uh, the business model? Yeah, thanks, uh, Gianmario. This is a uh, it's my pleasure actually to do this today because um, you know Maserati, yeah, it, it is a truly global business. We are um, a global brand, active. We have four different regions, and our business is, um, com you know, um, evenly spread almost across the world uh, with the four different regions. Uh, we're just coming from a 40% increase in our revenues from uh, last year, and we just completed a turnaround uh, that we started about two and a half years ago. Um, so we had a swing from being negative profitability to actually plus 5%, 5.1%. This is just the beginning for what we th see will be a trajectory that will take us to a floor of 15%, which will be benchmark. So it's a, it's, it's a great time to speak about Maserati right now. So these are impressive numbers and by the way, the industry is being revolutionized by the digital transformation. So someone says that uh, cars uh, today are computers with four wheels. Uh, what happens in luxury business like yours? Well, it is true that the, the, the automotive industry um, is revolutionizing from so many different aspects. Um, digital, digitalization, electrification, um, the taste of the customer and the expectations of the customers are changing. And especially if you think about the customer, which is the, what we call the modern luxury consumer, which is very global in nature and in mindset. It's making the industry change further. For us at Maserati, we see this more of as an opportunity than a threat because we were in the, in the journey of um, resetting and relaunching the brand. So to do that, we have to do two things. One is to understand and focus on the eternal values of the brand that, that are universal and don't change, which we have done. The second thing is to put the customer at the center because we exist to serve the customer at the end of the day. And uh, the desire of the customer towards uh, modern cars or modern luxury cars are far exceeding the expectation of a computer on wheels because we are way more than that. It's not only about digitalizing and removing friction, but also it's providing comfort, information, um, uh, providing extra safety. Uh, the car becomes a mix between your home, the extension of your body, um, your computer that allows you to get information and provide information and communicating too because like, like the things that you are wearing, we are wearing, the car communicates about who we are too and it's especially true for a brand like Maserati. Absolutely and I assume also that the customer experience uh, given the importance that you give to a customer in this uh, context uh, also uh, is empowered but also changes and the services that you have to provide are becoming more complicated. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, um, it's an exercise in humility I would say because if you put the customer at the center you really have to put yourself in his or her shoes. So it's really about transforming the entire experience from the moment they think about Maserati to the moment they actually buy Maserati, to the moment after they start driving Maserati, because that's when the journey really becomes material. It becomes, it, it, it starts early. It starts when the first time that someone thinks, oh, let me research Maserati. That's the first step. Actually, it starts probably one step before, how do we make them think about Maserati, which is a real exercise in humility, to all the way through when they decide to change car, to get them into another Maserati because that's how you build loyalty. It's not about actually creating loyalty in the customer, it's about being a loyal brand. Let me ask you one thing that is uh, strictly connected to this one because uh, it's impressive to see your career. So uh, you uh, have been uh, CMO in Nike, you have spent 25 years in Nike, you have been CEO of Converse and then you move uh, to uh, Maserati, a Stellantis group, a uh, CEO and again you move from uh, consumer good to OEM which is uh, not uh, the regular uh, and traditional uh, suspect in terms of change. Uh, your experience in consumer good has been important in this respect? 
Absolutely. But also the experience in um, having a global journey behind me, um, hopefully still ahead of me, um, it, it, really, it really is an exercise in confidence, balance with humility, meaning two things. When you, and it, these are things that I discussed with a really good friend of mine, which is a strategic advisor, as I chose to join the automotive industry, which is notoriously to be fairly insular from a senior leadership standpoint. I asked myself, why should I succeed <laughs> in an industry where really few people came from outside, let alone succeeding? So th there's two elements of it. One is, what's similar? And then I'll tell you what's different, at least in my experience. Sure. The similarity is actually coming from the words of this very wise, actually he's, he's a professor too, of business, uh, not in this esteemed institution, but another esteemed one. And he said, well, Davide, you know how to fly a plane. You, you know, you had a journey of growth, re-established the converse, and the plane changes, but you know planes, and you can find the route to the plane, and you just have to kind of trust your team and identify what are the different levers for this plane. Which I learned, it is absolutely true. It is true. It's like flying a plane, you have to have the humility and the confidence to understand where you can add value, and when you have to step back and trust your team. Um, so that's the similarity. The difference is, again, from a customer standpoint um, and then from a business model standpoint, which are related. Sure. From a customer standpoint, the speed of the 17 years old and the industry that gravitates around that, which is the sports industry, it's very, very fast. Everything changes with a very fast pace. What's hot now, a year ago wasn't. So the way you engage and, and you get the insights has to be very, very fast, and the flexibility in the business model from an industrial standpoint is a consequence of that. Absolutely. In automotive, everything is actually much, has more long, uh, longer cycles, and has the, the business model is very much centered around fixed costs that you have to make decisions about early on. So the risk factor is much higher, and so you need to kind of really understand the consumer's insights earlier, and that's why I think you see more figures like mine joining the automotive industry because it's less about the metal, it's more about the consumer sure. and the movement of the consumer over the long term. Interesting. David, we're living in a very complicated moment in these days. Uh, the pandemic was almost concluded and uh, the tragedy in the war in Ukraine started. Uh, how a leader and in general, how you're dealing with this uh, at Maserati? It's a, very, um, it's a very thoughtful and very relevant question, Gian Mario. And, you know, in this moment, as, as leaders, our thoughts are going to all the populations in Ukraine and around the world that are impacted by war or by difficult crisis. Um, and we hope these situations can be solved, collectively uh, will be solved soon. Um, it's important for us in this moment as leaders um, and all of us and all of our audience are studying to become leaders or we are in a leadership role just maybe in our family or in our community, we all have the responsibility to drive and build the future. As leaders, we are builders. Maserati, in a shop around the corner, in a society, in a family, uh, we're builders. So it's our role and responsibility to continue with tenacity, the resilience, confidence and hope to build a better future. So it's really important to remember this. Um, and it's very relevant also for us as Maserati because just yesterday we launched our new model. Uh, we have a responsibility of thousands of families and, uh, and, and the belief is that we can build in these difficult moments, these are the moments when we can build a better future for the future generations. These are very important words and thank you thank so you. much for visiting Bocconi University and I look forward to having you back with our students. Absolutely, it's my pleasure and anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Gian Mario.